All right, thanks for watching. And today I want to talk about a really cool theorem called the Bursuk Ulam theorem. I don't know if it's Turkish. It just sounds really awesome though. And what it says is the following incredible thing. Suppose you have a function f from, let's say, the uh, unit circle in R2 to R that's continuous. Then there are two antipodal points on the circle. So then there is x in S1 such that the point x and minus x have the same value. So such that f of x equals f of minus x. So again, all that says is that if you have the circle in R2, okay, so S1 and this is R, then if a function is continuous, then there are two antipodal points x and minus x that have the same value of f. So such that f of x equals f of minus x. And there's this amazing application that a student of mine told me about. And he just said that, consider Earth. And again, there's a reason why we'll talk about Earth. Then the Earth has an equator. And what this is saying is there are two antipodal points on the equator, x and minus x, whose temperature is the same. Because if you take f to be the temperature, then there are x and minus x with the same value of f. And we'll see there, there's some more amazing stuff happening afterwards. But um, before I do that, let me prove this. So, The reason I'm doing it is because the proof is pretty neat because it's just an application of the intermediate value theorem. So let g of x be f of x minus f of minus x. Okay. And um, by the way, careful, you can't just plug in x equals zero because zero is not on the circle, right? So this is the circle of radius one, so that's s1. And well, a zero is not in S1. However, here's the thing. If g of x naught equals zero for some x naught, for some x naught, then we're done. Because then f of x naught would be f of minus x naught, and then just choose that x naught. Else, we know that g of x is never equal to zero for all x. That would be uh, the opposite of that statement. So fix some x. Fix, fix such an x. And well, since g of x is non-zero, either g of x is positive or it's negative. But it doesn't really matter. You'll see why. So without loss of generality, assume g of x is positive. Okay? So g of x is positive, but here comes the amazing trick. It like never works except for this problem. Consider g of minus x. Then g of minus x, that is f of minus x, minus f of minus minus x. So f of x, okay. but that's precisely minus g of x, because that's minus f of x, minus f of minus x, but that's minus g of x, but we know g of x is positive, so minus g of x is negative. So what does this function look like? Well, it's continuous, because f is, and it goes from positive values to negative values. So if, you want, if this is x and this is minus x for some reason, let's say yes, x is negative in this case, um, then g goes from positive values to negative values. And therefore, just by the intermediate value theorem, it has to cross uh, the x-axis at some point. So by IVT, since g is continuous, there is x naught between 
x and minus x such that g of x naught is equal zero. Such that uh, g of x naught equals zero, which is either a contradiction or the end of the proof, however you like uh, to think about this, because then f of x naught equals f of minus x naught. And then we're done. How cool is that? However, uh, stuff gets even more exciting now because it turns out, so we've proven this in one dimension, it turns out this is also true in higher dimensions. So in general, we have the following. Because here we had S1, which was the uh, circle in R2. Well, in general, if you take the n-dimensional sphere, so Sn to Rn, okay, if this is continuous, then the same result holds. Then there is x, some point on that sphere, such that f of x equals my f of minus x. So just as before, there are two antipodal points in on that sphere, such that, that the value of f is the same. And now, let me illustrate this again with Earth. Before we had the result for the equator, namely, there are two points on the equator that have the same temperature. And that was if we had a function, a single valued function f from s1 to um, all, of, uh, r, all of r. Okay? But now, suppose you have a multi valued function from s2. Okay? So, in other words, the sphere, okay, a unit sphere, to r2. then what this is saying is, it says something even more awesome. What this is saying is, there are two antipodal points on Earth that not only have the same temperature, because temperature would be for a single valued function, but not only the same temperature, but also the same pressure. Because you can just take the function which consists of temperature and pressure. And that's a function to R2, because we have two pieces of information. And I've seen the proof of this. It was horrible, because there's a proof using algebraic topology, which I do not understand. And there's a proof using combinatorics, which I understand even less. So unfortunately, I will not prove that. That said, however, let me give you a neat application. An application is simply Sn is homeomorphic to no subset of uh, Rn. So there's no way sort of to deform the sphere uh, of rate, the, the n-dimensional sphere to actually get a subset of Rn. So fact, Sn is homeomorphic to no subset of Rn. So for instance, there's no way of deforming the sphere, the, the circle, right, to get, uh, there's no way of continuously deforming the circle to get actually a subset of R. What you would have to do is maybe tear down the circle or do anything else. And here is the proof, super neat. Why? Suppose f from Sn to, let's say, f of Sn, okay, some subset of Rn, is a homeomorphism. So suppose this is a subset of Rn. Then we have a problem because we've just, we know that there are two antipodal points that have the same value. Then there are no, f is continuous, so there are x uh, and minus x, 
in Sn with f of x equals f of minus x. But the problem is those points are different because they're on the circle. And in particular, we get that f is not 1 to 1. And that's a contradiction. A juicy contradiction, and therefore uh, we do not have that result. Uh, I think there's also an application to the ham sandwich theorem, which means that uh, for any compact sets, okay, there is some line that separates those compact sets into uh, two uh, subsets of the same measure, but um, maybe someone can explain in the comments how this works, because I don't really see it. But so a very neat problem, and again, thank you, my student, to, uh, for introducing me to this. I think this is awesome. All right, so if you like this and want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.